Good morning. How's everyone doing this morning? Good. Okay. <laughs> so friends, for this Lent season, we have different preachers sharing the message with us. So today, Ron will be preaching, and we're also going to have Mary Ellen, Reverend Craig, and myself. So we'll be sharing the pulpit during these weeks of Lent. Are you all preaching today? Not today. Ron will be preaching today. But here's the, the sense of sharing the pulpit with others. As we know, Lent is a time of self-reflection. It's a time for us to look deep inside of us and find the things that we should let go. But also a time of reconciliation. That's how I see it. Just because every time we look inside of our hearts to find the things they are not good to be there. It is also a moment when we understand the need of reconciling with God. And we should be doing that every single day. So it will be important to hear different voices during this time of self-reflection. And that's why I invited others to be preaching so we can hear all the voices, we can, we can listen to what God is telling us and sharing with us through their lives and experiences. So I want you to be in the spirit of self-reflection and reconciliation as we move forward into Lent season. Welcome to First United Methodist Church of Pittsfield. Good morning. Pastor Marcelo had gave you an introduction, which I had also semi-planned, so I don't need to tell you any more about that. <laughs> no problem. Uh, I do not have announcements. I will remind people that the bells, uh, bell choir has started up. Of course, our band meets on Wednesday evening, and the bell choir has started up on Thursdays at 6 o'clock. Um, I do not have any other announcements. Are there any from the congregation? So let us prepare our hearts for worship. Please join me in the call to worship. Ashes have been smeared and sins have been confessed. These times, they are troubling. This journey, it is hard. It is God who sustains, not the temptations of this world. In the Lord, it's our trust our protection from harm. Come, let us worship the one whom we serve. We follow our faithful Lord. Amen.
our first reading this morning. It's from the book of Psalms, chapter 27. And I'll be reading from the New International Version. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even when I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. For in the day of trouble, He will keep me safe in His dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of His sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, Seek his face, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord and the land of the living. Be strong. And take heart and wait for the Lord. The word of God for the people of God.
music ringing, it finds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging. Since love is and comforts die, I know my Savior liveth. What though the darkness gather round, psalms in the night he giveth. No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm since love is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? The peace of Christ make fresh my heart a fountain ever springing. All things are mine since I am His. How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm a beautiful song. <laughs> and thank you, Joshua. Our second reading today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13. At that time, some Pharisees came to Jesus and said to him, leave this place and go somewhere else. Herod wants to kill you. He replied, go tell that fox, I will keep on driving out demons and healing people today and tomorrow and on the third day I will reach my goal. In any case, I must press on today and tomorrow and the next day, for surely no prophet can die outside Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Good morning. I... Uh... Good morning. There'll be people here, right? <laughs> All right. Just to, so y'all know, I smile a lot. I'm smiling a lot right now because I'm nervous. So what I like to do when I'm nervous is try to put some levity to the situation. And here we go. There's a young man standing outside of a grocery store. The dog is tied up next to him. Another gentleman walks by and says to him, hey, is your, does your dog bite? Little boy looked at him and said, sir, no, my dog does not bite. So the gentleman went over to pet the dog. The dog almost took the man's arm off. 
He jumped back and looked at the boy and said, son, I thought you said your dog don't bite. He said, sir, that's not my dog. Anyway, <laughs> you'll figure it out later and laugh later. So I just, wanted, <laughs> I just wanted to say uh, I'm glad to see everyone this morning. Uh, I'm glad to, uh, that uh, you guys made it out. And during this season of Lent, I know that uh, I, I was thinking the same thing Mary Ellen said when she came up was that Pastor Marcello is all in my message here. I'm trying to get some of that stuff out, and he's already saying it. So you'll hear some things that he said me say. I'll say the same thing. So I guess that's good company. All right. So let's pray. Father, we welcome you into this place. We welcome you into this fellowship with us this morning. We thank you, Lord God, for bringing us here and keeping us safe. We ask that you bless the words that they're about to hear that I'm about to say. May they be from you and not from me, although through me, but not from me. Let them hear the words and fall on their hearts that they may want to strengthen their relationship with you as I do every day. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so when I first began to read this scripture, I, uh, I said, okay, um, what am I to do with this? <laughs> it's not like it's a happy scripture, you know, it's like, some, some, you know, it's not like, you know, you, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, you know, you can build on that. And I'm thinking, well, this is Lent under his wings. Then I started thinking like, what does a chicken have to do with all of this? You know, I mean, although I like chicken and I mean, chicken are very fond of one another. I was trying to figure out how to bring this message forward. So I had a lot of questions and they went as followed. And I was like, my first question was, why this particular scripture? apply to Lent? How does it apply in my daily spiritual journey? Why was the Pharisees helping Jesus? How does this speak to God's grace and love? And again, what does a mother hen have to do with it? Well, as I asked the questions, I sat and I let it sink in. And then it dawned on me. First of all, is Jesus talking? Why are we celebrating Lent? Jesus. This will be group participation. So when I ask questions, the answer is Jesus. Okay? All right, great. So why, who was talking? Why we celebrate Lent? Why are we able to have a healthy, loving relationship with our Heavenly Father? All right. And because of Jesus' work, finished work at the cross, we are able to overcome all the negative attacks and things that we are faced with. And not just from the outside, but sometimes the enemy is in uh, me. So you, I just think that the meditation on his word, on what he did, on how he challenged people not just to challenge them, but to challenge the actual foundation of their thought. Where'd that thought come from? You know, what, who, why do you feel less than? Hold on, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Like I said, I had questions. A lot more questions than what I normally do and uh, normally have, really. I ask the Lord questions all the time, really. I just, you know, I'm always, um, uh, sidebar, there's a book called Who, Re who Moved My Cheese? If you ever get a chance to read it, it's a small read, but it talks about checking your cheese and making sure it's always fresh. And so you're not eating stale cheese, so to speak. Um, so I'm always talking to the Lord because I never want to get stale, meaning I just don't want to just become just comfortable and, and say, you know, I got it all together and just go on automatic pilot <clears throat> and, and just, just assume that everything is, is good. Although I believe that in my heart, it's good to ask the question. You know, uh, sometimes you have to ask your loved ones, hey, hey, we good? You know, even though you see them every day. We good? We all right? Everything all right with you? Everything all right? Okay. So that's fine. And those are life experiences. So then, I, like I said, I began to ask other questions like, okay, I, I'm, we're celebrating Lent, but what does all this ceremony mean? Well, thank you for answering earlier. I'm going to say it again now. <laughs> Preparation for Easter, that's one, through prayer and meditation. Uh, mortifying the flesh, 
uh, things you sacrifice, people give up things for Lent uh, to honor that relationship, to say, Lord, I trust and believe in you. Then there's a gratefulness for the repentance of sin, that the Lord came and sacrificed himself so that we could cry out, Abba, Father, and he hears us. Sacrificial offerings, you, things you may give, your time, money, uh, energy to certain situations and things. Simplistic living, volunteering, giving, again, giving of your time and, and, and helping someone who might be a little less fortunate and then those things. They all play a part in the season that we're in. And all those things lead back to what Jesus did when he walked this earth. He touched everyone, everywhere he went. He restored people to their rightful position so that they could have a healthy, focused relationship on the Heavenly Father. He didn't brag about himself. He pointed to the, to the Father. He said, listen, you see me, you see him who sent me. You see me do what my Father has sent me to do. We sang a song earlier that talked about how uh, God is love, and he gives us and shares with us, and he does with us what he is, love. And these are the things that we share with other people when we encounter them. It may not be the serpy, oh, I love you, and, you know, all of that, but it's in action. It's in deeds, in the things that you do. Sometimes they're not even seen. You know, you ever, I, I know I've been in the parking lot leaving the store or something and, you know, I see a cart, you know, just sitting there and I'm just led to just push it to the little thing. Now that might be a big, not be the big thing, but to the person who got to push the cart back into the building, it saved them a trip of chasing a cart. I didn't see it. I just assumed that it happened. And when I did it, I didn't do it to say, look at how good I am, Lord. I did it because it's just naturally in me to do things sometimes just out of sheer love. It's as simple as it is. This relationship that we share is not hard. It's only hard when we fight <laughs> against him. It's only hard when we say, you know, Lord, I got this one. But again, I'm jumping ahead of myself. So again, like I said, I had questions. So I answered the first question. What about Lent? What, why, why is this important? So then that led me to answer, well, I wasn't, you know, the Lord showed me the answer to the second, third, and fourth questions. And I realized that sometimes, again, when we're faced with life's disappointments and judgments of ourselves and others, it can seem downright dismal at times. But sometimes we can put so much energy into the negative that we think that that's all we are, is our negative situation or the mistake that we made or the person that we offended or whatever it is. And that's what leads me to talk about the Pharisees. Pharisees were people that had a problem with Jesus. They didn't really believe in him. But yet and still, they're coming to warn him. Your enemy is coming to warn you about another enemy. Normally the saying goes, the enemy is my enemy is my friend, but not in this case. Because <laughs> everywhere Jesus went, even when he went into people's houses to celebrate, there was always a question of some sort of thing. If you are the son of God, why this? Or if he knew he was eaten with, he wouldn't do that. If he knew who she was, he wouldn't talk to her. You know, it was all these things that the Pharisees were doing to Jesus. So I'm like, why would they even care to come? and tell him and talk to him. It'll be like somebody that you may not see eye to eye with, and you don't necessarily have to be, you know, deathly enemies, you know, but sometimes it's just people. Sometimes they're on their job. Sometimes it's, you know, just people you encounter shopping or, or just even in family. Sometimes you have disagreements and people talk and they attack and in those conversations, you're hurting one another. But even at that point, the people come back and tell you, you know, so-and-so is looking for you or look out for that person. And you kind of look at them side eyes like, wait a minute, why are you even saying this to me? You don't like me that much either. So I'm like, all right, Lord, why is that? But that's, that's, that's one of the examples in scripture how 
we're able to overcome because of a God that we serve and that he loves us unconditionally. And during this Lent season, remember that. Remember that this whole thing is about reconciliation. There was a disconnect in the beginning, and God is restoring that through his son, Jesus Christ. He gave us his best, his beautiful son that we call upon, that we can go before the throne of grace and, and be grateful and thankful that, you know, we're able to do that. We have a place to leave our problems. We have a place to say, Father, look, I'm hurting today. Today is not a mountaintop day, but I know that you're with me, so everything is going to be all right. It doesn't feel okay in the moment, but I know it's going to be okay. And, you know, we used to sing a song called Trouble Don't Last Always. I'm so glad trouble don't last always. The problem is when trouble comes, it sucks. <laughs> it doesn't feel good. It doesn't, it's not comfortable. We're not in a place where we can be like, woohoo, I'm feeling good today. No. That's not, it's, but even in those moments, he's with us to bring us comfort, to bring us peace. Sometimes peace in a situation where we don't need, we, we feel like we're going to lose our mind. My grandmother, you know, she used, to tell, she used to say things like, Lord, keep my mind even as I feel I'm losing my mind. That's a relationship. And out of that, out of that love that he has for us, he meets us right where we're at. That's just the way it is. And, you know, sometimes, like I said, we, we, during those moments, we, we feel like we could be cut off from God, like he's not around, like he's not there. He's somewhere, but he's not here. I don't feel good. I, I'm not, you know, I don't really want to talk to nobody. I barely want to talk to him about it. But even in those moments, he's there. Even in those moments, he cares. Even in those moments, he shares love. And, and I think about this, and it's, it's like sometimes my, I, I have a crazy mind, so please bear with me. I think about love being in the most hardened places. You know, in my mind, prison is the most hardened place you could go to. I, I don't wish that on anybody. And I pray for the people that are there. But even in those places... There's a society within that society, if you understand what I'm saying. It, it's just that there's not a lot of understanding in that society from what I understand. I don't know. I ain't never been. Don't plan on going. Um, I just know from what I talk to people that have been through that process. Even in those places, there's love. Can you imagine that? Like, I, I sometimes think about, you know, people say, well, how do you feel like, how do you feel God moves? I said, this is the way I feel. The enemy likes to, and I say the enemy, the devil, whoever you want, want to refer to him, but you can get put in a situation where you feel like you're separate from God, and he'll make you feel like you're lost. It's almost like uh, being in the dark, and you hear the roar of a lion. You'll kill yourself trying to get out of that room. But if they turn the light on and you saw that this lion, it's still a lion now, don't get me wrong, but it has no claws, has no teeth. I know me, <laughs> I'd be like, come on, come on, hey, ha, 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 jump on the lion, play with him, you can't do nothing because he can't hurt you. And that's how the enemy operates. He puts us in a situation where we'll feel like we're, we're under duress and we're threatened, but we're safe and we're secure because it's already been taken care of. We read it in the Bible. There's, he locked the lion's mouth up. Now, they had claws and teeth, but he locked their mouth up. People lived around him all night. Daniel walked on out. So when I think about this season and how it applies to me and for you, take it with you, it's, it's, it's a protective reminder that uh, it's a reminder that we are protected, that we are loved, that we are cared for, that we don't have to worry. Which leads me to this chicken. So I looked it up, not going to lie, I looked it up. I said, what is the purpose of a mother hen gathering her chicks up under her wings? Well, I found out. Most of the time when that happened, there's a predator around, something that, that, that's threatening to, this, to these children. And, I, and mothers in here, I, and fellas, if you don't know, <laughs> mothers will fight. <laughs> They will fight hard for their children. And it's no different when it comes to the animals. So when that mother hen grabs her chicks, 
She's in a defensive posture, and she's looking for the threat. Where's the threat? Who's trying to harm my babies? And she will fight, sometimes to the detriment of her life. She'll lose it for her children. And that's how I say, you know, now God can't die, obviously, but that's how I look at the Lord protecting us. When he says he's gathering us up under his wings, he's protecting us. He's keeping us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. Regardless of what's going on circumstantial-wise outside of that, knowing that, having that visual picture of being protected, of being covered, of being loved, of being cared for, I don't know about you, but that's such an uplifting thing for me. There's a picture outside a pastor's office where there's a person sleeping on the sidewalk, and it's like this God's hand is over that person. That's how I think about how we live daily. Sometimes I'm, I'm sure that the Lord has protected me from things that I didn't even, wasn't even aware of. I just was just blindly just going about my day, and something, something was going on behind me or near me that never got to me. That's what this season is about for me. It's about relationship. It's about his love for me. It's about how much he cared for me, that he gave his best, his son, how he protects me, how he keeps me, how he just genuinely all around is just, when I don't deserve it, is just there for me. And that means so much to me because sometimes people can let you down and it's not that you're trying to do it because you're being mean or you have some other agenda. Sometimes it just happens. Everybody can't be everything to everybody at all times. But I do know a place and I do know a man, his name is Jesus, that you can go to and talk to and draw from and draw some more and draw some more. There's a scripture that says, take, eat, see that the Lord is good. It's not just one time, it's every day. Daily we are blessed with new benefits. And that's what this is about for me. And I hope that it's about for you. And I pray that this message will touch you in your heart, in your heart garden, and that you will just cry out, Abba Father, I thank you, I love you, I appreciate you. Continue to take care of me, or my brother like you take care of me, my sister like you take care of me. And one day, one day soon, <laughs> as the song says, soon is very soon, we will see the king. And we will stand before him for an eternity saying, holy, 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 Hosanna in the highest. Be blessed, my friends.
Please join me in prayer. Precious God, here we are once again before you, your glory, your mercy, your love and grace. Asking for each and every person who is now experiencing any forms of any form of suffering, despair, anguish, anxiety, pain. We now pray for those affected by the war in Ukraine. We pray for peace. We also pray for those who are there helping the vulnerable, finding ways to offer shelter, food, support of any kind to those suffering in the war. We also pray for our congregation and for each member and family in this place, for those who are here, for those who could not come here this morning, for those participating on Facebook. We pray that your grace and your love and mercy follow us during this time of Lent. May your Spirit help us understand the beauty of your protection and presence upon us. May your Spirit help us understand the things that we should let go, the things we should be reviewing, rebuilding, reaffirming, abandoning, different things we should be examining during this time of Lent, help us to understand them and see them in a way that we can create a process of reconciliation every day. May your blessings be upon us as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, help us to honor your name Come and set up your kingdom so that everyone on earth will obey you as you are obeyed in heaven. Give us our food for today and forgive us for doing wrong as we forgive others. Keep us from being tempted and protect us from evil. Amen. As blessed children of God, let us now share our abundance with others by presenting our gifts for the kingdom. And the ushers will now wait upon you for your offering. Generous God, as we travel this Lenten journey, 
allow us to walk beside Jesus as he makes his journey into Jerusalem. As we offer our gifts this morning, may it be our way of saying we won't turn away from problems and con conflicts of this world, but like Jesus, we will walk toward them. All we, all we take for the journey is the compassion, mercy, and sacrifice that he carried, moving towards what waited in the holy city. We journey in Christ's steps and pray in Christ's holy name. Amen.
May we understand the spirit of land reflecting on who we are, reflecting on what we want as Christians and what we want to become in our communities. May we recognize that we are under the wings of God, being protected and guided. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.